Hello everyone, welcome to mcode and today we are going to discuss about file management in Unix. So in the previous lecture we have discussed all about the basics of Unix and Linux languages which is very important to start our journey in the shell scripting. So before starting the shell scripting we have to cover all the basic topics which are related to Unix to get to know the clear idea of the concept. So today we will discuss all about the file management in Unix. So as we already discussed in the previous lecture that all the data in Unix is organized into the files and these files are organized into directories and these directories are again organized into a tree like structure called the file system. So when you work with the Unix one way or another you will spend most of the time working with the files as all your data will be collected into these files and directories. So this lecture will help you understand how to create and remove files and also copying and renaming them. So majorly there are three basic types of files. First one is ordinary files which are nothing but a file on the system that contains data or text or a program instructions. So we will be looking at the ordinary files in this lecture. Second one is directories. Directory stores the both special and ordinary files. So for users familiar with the Windows or Mac OS, Unix directories are equivalent to folders. And the last one is special files. So some special files provide access to hardware such as hard drives, CD-ROM drives, modems and Ethernet adapters. So this was all about the basic types of files in Unix. Our next topic is listing the files and directories. So this topic we have already covered in the last lecture but let me give you in-depth explanation of this list command. So to list the files and directories stored in the current directory we use ls command to it. So there are majorly two points we will cover now. So along with the ls if we use the hyphen l option which will give us the more information. This information we have already extracted in the previous lecture. Let me show you one more time. So now we have boot up the sequence terminal for listing out the items you just have to type command ls. So just type ls enter. So these are all the directories which are present in our current directory. But if you want the more information of these directories you just have to use the option such as hyphen l along with the ls command. So ls and hyphen l. So as you can see you are getting more information for each of the items which are present in our current directory. But let me give you a clear idea what these all columns mean really. So here the first column represents the file type and the permissions given to the file. This first one is the file type and these are all the permissions which are provided to the specific directory or a file. The second column represents the number of memory blocks taken by the file or a directory. So this you can see these are the memory allocations of these files. The third column represents the owner of the file. This is the Unix user who created this file. So here is the username. The next column represents the group of the owner. So every Unix user will have an associated group. The fifth column shows the file size in bytes. So as you can see all these directories are empty. So here you can see the zero byte size. The next column represents date and the time when the file was created or modified for the last time. So when you create or modify the file it will automatically reflected in this sixth column. And the last one is the seventh column which is very obvious it represents the file or the directory name. So this was all about the hyphen l option in the listing command. Our next topic is meta characters. So the meta characters has some special meaning in Unix. So for example, we will consider two meta characters which are star and question mark. So if we use star to match zero or more characters and a question mark to match with the single character. Let me show you with an example. So for this example, let's consider if we want to display all the size whose name starts with ch and ends with doc. So we can do that by using these meta characters. All you have to do is 
just type listing command to list out the items and again we have to use this meta characters so the first condition is it has to start with ch so ch give the star and it should end with the extension doc so just give dot and type doc as you can see we're getting the files whose name starts with ch and ends with the doc so this is how you can use the meta characters when you're dealing with large number of files and you need to find the specific file so here the star works as a meta character which matches with any character so if you want to display all the files ending with just dot doc then you can use like ls star dot doc as you can see here you can get all the files which are ending with dot doc extension our next topic is very important which is creating the files in unix so in unix system we can create a file by using the vi editor tool for creating ordinary files so it is very simple process you just have to type vi and again after hitting space you have to give the file name but there are some rules which you have to follow for using the vi editor this all we will cover in the separate lecture we will only talk about vi editor and how to use it effectively to create your own shell scripts so now in this example we will be creating a file by using the vi editor so let me clear out the screen by using the clear command after that for creating a file you just have to give vi and again the file name so in this we can give it like shell1 so here the vi is the command for creating the file and the shell1 is the file name after hitting enter as you can see we are in the shell1 file now so you can give any commands you want to execute and store in this particular file so for this example we will just type one text message after opening the file you have to press the i key to come into the edit mode so now we are in the edit mode now so we can start writing our content in this file which will be stored and saved in this file we will store some simple text message in this so here hello world will be stored in the file name chel1 but you will ask how to get out from this vi editor so it is very simple but as you already know that we have in the insert mode now you have to press the escape key and now press the two keys which are shift double z to come out of the file completely so now we will have a file which will be created with a file name here we have given shell1 in the current directory so if you want to edit your existing file this is our next topic so for editing the existing file we just have to again use the vi editor so we will cover this with a simple example so again we are in the segwin now let's consider we have to edit the already created file named shell1 so what we have to do is again type vi shell1 as you can see we are in the already created file now where we have already saved a text message hello world so if we want to modify or change it you have to again go into the edit mode by pressing i key so now you are in the edit mode we can just edit our message again so in the next line we will add like this is our first shell script this way we can modify our existing file by using the vi editor so again use the escape key to get out from the edit mode and again put shift z to get outside from the vi editor our next topic is displaying the content within the file so it is very simple we have to just use the cat command to see the content of a file so now we have already created one file named shell1 so we will use the cat command to display our inserted content let me show you how again we have switched to the command prompt and we will just type cat and the file name which is shell1 after hitting enter as you can see it is displaying all the contents which are present in our file name shell1 so this is very simple you can use this command to display the contents present in the file and also we can display the line numbers by using the hyphen b option in the cat command just like we have used hyphen l option in the ls command 
so for this just similarly type the cat command and use the hyphen b and after that just similarly give the file name after hitting enter you're getting the content of the file but also you're getting the line numbers when we're dealing with the big scripts it will be easy to identify and analyze the code effectively our next topic is counting the words in a file so we can use the wc command to get a count of total number of lines words and characters contained in a specific file so for example if you want to know the count of total numbers of lines words and characters of our already created file which is shell1 we can do that by using the wc command let me show you how for this just type wc and the file name shell1 so here you can see there's so many numbers pop up so the first number will represent the total number of lines in the file so as you can see there are two lines present in this so it is showing two what about this eight so this eight represents the total number of words which are present in the file the last number represents the bytes in a file so it is the actual size of our file which is named shell1 and the last one is again the file name our next topic is copying the file so for to make a copy of file we just have to use the cp command so the basic syntax is given here so first we have to give the cp command again we have to give the source file of which you have to make the copy and the destination file will be the file will be the copied file that you want so let me show you how to create it so first let me just clear the screen because it's very cluttered by using the clear command so now for copying the file we just have to use the cp command after that we have to give the source file so source file let's consider the similar file that we are experimenting on which is shell1 and after space you have to give the destination file so we will make a copy of it so it will say like copy of shell1 hit enter so let me show you if it is created or not by using the cat command we can get the contents within this copied file so to do that just use cat and type copy shell1 as you can see the similar contents we are getting as similar to the shell1 so it means copy of shell1 has been created this command is very useful if you want to back up your files so that you can use them in future our next topic is moving the files so mv command is used for moving the existing file completely into the new file so this is the syntax for mv command so it is similar to like a renaming process here we are passing the old file and moving all the content into the new file which we will give the unique name which is not present in our present directory let me show you how so here we are again using the similar file which is shell1 so to do that use the mv command if you want to rename the file shell1 to the another name we can do that by using this mv command so just type mv then give shell1 and give the new name so we will give like shell2 after hitting enter as you can see it has been renamed so when we try some commands on the shell1 it will show like no such files or directory because it has been moved to the newer file which is shell2 so shell2 we are getting the content within the file so we can say that it has been renamed successfully our last topic of today's lecture is deleting the file so it is very straight forward process for deleting the existing file which is present in our directory we have to use the rm command so the syntax is also pretty straight forward you just have to type rm and give the file name so let's wind this up quickly as you have been already familiar with the syntaxes again we are in the shell prompt give the clear after that so before deleting the file just list out the files which are present in our current directory for that just use ls and to get more details just use hyphen l option here you can see the contents of the files so these are all the directories so which we cannot remove by using the rm command there is a separate command that we will discuss in the upcoming tutorials 
so here we can see three files are present copy of shell one another one is scala and the shell two so we can delete these files by using the rm command so just list out the contents again so here we will remove the scala file so to remove that just use rm and give scala after hitting enter so now the scala file has been completely removed let me show you again type the ls command as you can see the scala has been removed from our current directory but you have to remember one thing clearly so the file may contain useful information so it is always recommended to be cautious while using this delete command and one bonus tip if you want to remove the multiple items at one time you can do that by using this rm command you just have to give all the files which are separated by spaces so in this we have left with the copy shell one and shell two so these are all the files that we can remove now so to do that just use rm give copy of shell one and shell two so we have given two files that we want to remove completely after hitting enter let me validate to you just use ls command as you can see the copy of shell one and shell two these two files are completely deleted from this current directory so i hope you understood all the basic things you need to know about the file management in unix so if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media sites which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching